starts at 12. The Night Beat starts right now. San Antonio lawmakers are stepping up and looking to make some changes when it comes to dangerous dogs. This in the wake of last month's horrific dog attack that took the life of an elderly man. Several bills have been filed up in Austin this week. The night team's Erica Hernandez breaks down the changes that are being proposed to better protect the public. Three new bills filed on Friday in the Texas legislature, each one aimed at addressing specific problems with current laws that deal with dangerous dogs. The filings come after a dog attack two weeks ago that killed 81-year-old Ramon Nakira Jr. and injured his wife and two others on Depla Street on the west side. It's a tragedy. Uh, we want to do everything that we can with the state government as well as local animal care services to make sure it doesn't happen again. Mayor Ron Nirenberg addressed the proposed legislation at a community service project event Saturday. He says the city is looking for ways to protect the public when it comes to dangerous dogs as well as compliance issues with neighbors. If there are a number of calls, animal care, code compliance, police calls to a particular house where it's evident the neighbor is being negligent or uh, being reckless with the community around them, we want to be able to flag that and prevent incidents from happening in the future. The bills proposed by state representatives Elizabeth Campos and Diego Bernal and state Senator Jose Menendez would increase the criminal penalty related to an attack by a dangerous dog. They would also allow animal care services to deal deem a dog dangerous without a victim's affidavit and allow victims to anonymously file dangerous dog affidavits. The mayor says neighbors on Depla Street didn't file affidavits because they feared retaliation. We want to make sure that we're, we're getting those affidavits filed so animals can be confiscated if they are a danger to the public. The mayor says on March 22nd, ACS is expected to provide a briefing to city council about that dangerous dog attack. As far as the dog owners, Christian Moreno and Abilene Schneider remain in the Bear County Jail. Both their cases are expected to go in front of a grand jury at some point to see if they'll be indicted on felony charges. Outside City Hall, Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. New on the night beat, a 17-year-old Brennan High School student is facing serious charges for allegedly bringing a gun onto the campus. Bear County Sheriff's deputies made aware of that incident because of a photo of the teen with the weapon that was posted on social media. Deputies and Northside ISD officers checked the school but learned the teen was no longer on campus. He was found at a barber shop wearing the same clothes as in that photo. He was taken into custody without incident. He's charged with unlawful carrying of a weapon and possessing a weapon in a prohibited place. More details coming to light in the arrest of a suspect wanted in connection to a double murder at an Eastside hotel. Christian Ray Belmundez is locked up tonight and his bond is set at half a million dollars. A 19 year old was arrested yesterday by SAPD and the U.S. Marshals Lone Star Fugitive Task Force. Investigators say surveillance video and a witness helped lead to his arrest. Belmudez is accused of killing Sana McNeil and Gabriel Sanchez. Their bodies were discovered inside a hotel room at a travel lodge off of I-35 back on January 17th. Both had multiple gunshot wounds. According to an arrest affidavit, surveillance video shows Sean Sanchez arriving with another man whose face was covered with a mask. Police say video shows that man running out of the room with two guns in each hand. A witness ended up calling police saying he saw the victims and that unidentified man the same night at a gas station. And that gas station surveillance captured a clear image of the unknown man's face. He was later identified as Belmudez. He is now facing two capital murder charges. Today, some local volunteers stepped up to increase fire safety awareness. They were taking part in the American Red Cross Sound the Alarm event. The community initiative gives away free smoke detectors and educates the public about having them checked. The event also included a block walk where some smoke detectors were checked in a nearby neighborhood near the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. According to the Red Cross, smoke detectors should be tested once a month and batteries replaced yearly to make sure they are working properly. A big group of doctors and nurses at University Hospital going the extra mile today to help children battling cancer by sitting down for a clean shave, so to speak. Take a look. The doctors and nurses taking part in the St. Baldrick's Day fundraiser where participants have to shave their heads. The event raises money for cancer research for kids, family, friends and colleagues support those by taking part 
and donating money. Everyone has cheering on others, including one of two nurses who gladly had their long hair shaved off. She says it was her way of doing more. 100% directly to pediatric cancer research, which in the United States is only federally funded 4%. It's not a lot. So all this money, all the money we've collected here goes straight into that for better drugs, better treatment, better options for our kids. And those who participated today ended up uh, raising more than expected. We're told today's event was able to quadruple their original goal. Around Texas tonight, a proposed bill filed in the Texas Senate yesterday would establish an educational savings account that would give families who want to send their children to private school money to pay for it. Senate Bill 8 could allow families to use up to $8,000 in taxpayer money per student. The savings account provisions are part of the legislation's broader theme of parental rights, something Texas Governor Greg Abbott has been advocating for. If it passes, the bill would also allow parents the chance to review classroom instruction material, and it would also impose new rules on how gender and sexual orientation is taught at all grade levels. And happening right now up in Austin, South by Southwest, droves of people from all over the world are converging on the capital city by air and by ground. On a typical busy day, officials with Austin Bergstrom International Airport say they see more than 26,000 travelers. Just yesterday alone, they were expecting 35,000 passengers. Some of that foot traffic, though, also includes Austinites who are said to be making an exit. AAA says it's a combination of folks leaving the capital city to avoid traffic because of South by Southwest. Others just getting out for spring break. Families are making up for lost time. Grandparents traveling with their adult children and their grandkids. AAA also seeing an increase in international spring break bookings. The South by Southwest Music and Film Festival runs through next Sunday, March 19th. Back here at home and speaking of spring break, the sun is getting uh, setting later and school is out for the week. Thousands are kicking off the spring break and although the city is packed with tourists, our Camelia Juarez tells us some great staycation spots that won't be swamped with out of towners. You don't need to go out of town to paddleboard. It keeps the kids active. They're able to get out and see a little bit of, you know, Mother Nature's spring break is the first week paddle boards and kayak rentals will be available at Woodlawn Lake and Elmendorf Lake. We did a couple races to the lighthouse just to make it fun. <laughs> the Parks and Recreation Department is partnering up with the nonprofit Expedition School. All the proceeds go towards helping visually impaired adults and people living with developmental disabilities. The assistant director of Expedition School, Adam Shedlowski, says they're going to be open as long as the weather is pleasant. There is a cold front coming in, so check Instagram, check our website, or just call or text us anytime for the latest closures. And then once the summer rolls around, we're open daily. The organization provides life vests and rentals start at $15. If you're looking for something fun and free this spring break, try San Antonio Parks. No need to head to the beach. There is plenty of sand and water at Hemisphere Park. Why was the sand your favorite? Because we were building a bunch of stuff in the sun. And then why was the water park your favorite? Because I like to play in the water. The Hernandez family says they can always find something to do during spring break. We always just take plans and once go with we the write flow. down, go with the flow. So we do Six Flags, SeaWorld, um, the mall. Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. Well, I'm glad some people had a way to keep cool today because yeah. it was a hot one out there yeah. for us, Tim. Our first 90 degree day of the year uh. to kick off spring break. Yeah. You know what, though? Today is actually going to be the hottest day of spring break. As that gentleman said, we are expecting a cold front, but it's going to be a series of cold fronts moving through. I want to start, though, by taking a look at highs today around uh, South Central Texas. 92, nearly 20 degrees above the high. Out in Del Rio, it was 97. That's a record for a day. Nearly 100 down in Laredo, upper 80s in Kerrville. You ready for this? Get on the temperature roller coaster today. 92 tomorrow 84 Monday in the 60s and Tuesday struggling to get out of the 60s. We'll head back up that temperature roller coaster by Wednesday and Thursday when highs will be back in the 80s, 70s rather. But guess what? An even stronger cold front ahead of next weekend. There's a lot to unpack 
in this wacky weather for uh, the rest of spring break. I'll have these details coming up. Still to come on the night beat, an online challenge turned older model Kia and Hyundai cars into targets for thieves. But the fix is in. A software update is making these models more secure. How it works and where owners need to take their vehicles to get those updates. And do you want flies with that? An open door leads to an infestation of flies at this smoothie business. And that door was still open weeks after a health inspection. I take you behind the kitchen door to find out why. Well, California has had a heck of a year, and now once again they are dealing with another major storm. This one bringing torrential rains to northern areas of the state. ABC's DeMarco Morgan has the details of President Biden approving Governor Newsom's request for an emergency declaration amid a series of devastating winter storms. Look how violent that water is. In Tulare County, California, floodwaters racing through the streets. Firefighters helping to rescue residents stranded by the rising waters. The heavy rain causing this road in Santa Cruz County to cave in. I've lived here my whole life and I've never seen the creek go actually through the road. In Monterey County, the Pajara River levee breached, leaving roads flooded. Caltran crews responding to areas of instability along this highway. And the foothills, this river flowing over its banks, homes threatened by the floodwaters. And the Sierra Nevada Mountains and the city of South Lake Tahoe, the heavy snow load crumbled to the awning of this gas station, sparking a gas fire. It's one of at least seven structures that have collapsed. The incoming rain coming in on top of that snow, we're doubling and tripling some of that weight. The city is cautioning against unnecessary travel as the area deals with the snow melt. We can see um, landslides, mudslides, um, also avalanche control is in effect. Over in Sacramento, the Oroville Dam opening up its main spillway for the first time in four years following record drought. So right now we're releasing 8,000 cubic feet per second of water. FEMA says federal assistance has now been made available to California as it continues to deal with a seemingly nonstop series of storms. DeMarco Morgan, ABC News, Los Angeles. You, you know, name it, California has had to deal with it. Yeah, this and you know, it's it's kind of a, a sign of changes because yeah. we've been in a triple dip La Nina. We've had La Nina three winters in a row, and we're right. officially out of La Nina now, kind of in a neutral period before we get into El Nino. But we could be seeing some healthy rains potentially here this year. I'm hopeful we do because it has been a very long time of drought. Today, though, it was hot. It was just hot around San Antonio. Take a look at the Almanac. We got up to 92 degrees. That's two degrees shy of a record for the day. The record of 94 set back in 1954. And this morning we were down to only 63 degrees, well above the average for the low too. Now in the coming days, we're going to be seeing temperatures cooler than that. Today, 92 is the hottest we're going to be all spring break long, but outside right now it's very mild. It's still nearly 80 degrees in San Antonio. We're an hour and a half away from midnight. It's 80 in Del Rio, 80 in Catula. As we take a wider view across the state of Texas, you can clearly see that it's much colder across North Texas, the Panhandle. This is where a cold front sits, and this front is going to move through tomorrow. It's going to be cooler tomorrow, but still warm. We're really not going to feel the cool air until about Monday, Tuesday in San Antonio. But what this is going to do immediately is shove all of this humidity out of here and it's going to be pretty dry behind that front. Notice too that uh, there's not too much rain around this front. In fact, we're not expecting any showers or activity from this front as it moves through tomorrow. Any of the storminess is going to stay up near that low uh, where there are some severe storms in Arkansas this evening. So again, the biggest change we'll notice tomorrow is a drop in humidity from that front starting off fairly muggy in the early morning hours and then humidity will come down dew points falling into the 40s it'll be pleasantly dry tomorrow even though it will be warm all right as we go ahead and take a look at your ksat 12 hour forecast tomorrow reminder sun's gonna rise an hour later spring forward in the overnight hours so we're not going to see sunrise until close to eight tomorrow temperatures will be in the 60s to start off the day near 80 degrees around noon and then we're forecasting a high of 84 tomorrow. So not quite as warm as it was today, but still a warm day. 
if you want to enjoy some time by the pool this spring break, tomorrow is the best day to do that because it's just going to get cooler from here on out. Elsewhere, temperatures tomorrow will be near 90 degrees in Del Rio, 92 Creases Springs, 95 in Catula, around the mid 80s around San Antonio, upper 70s in the Hill Country. We'll take you into neighborhood view here, 78 in Bernie and Bulverde, but 84 in San Antonio, 81 in Seguin, 81 in New Braunfels, nearly 90 in Sabinal, Uvalde, 80 87 in Divine, 84 in Floresville. So again, big temperature swings over the spring break. It's mainly going to be a pretty cool spring break. So we'll be warm tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday, only in the 60s. That's not great for pool days out there on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday will rebound a little bit in the 70s, but still fairly close to the average of 73. Then an even stronger front is going to arrive Thursday night into Friday. That's going to drop our highs down to near 60 degrees Friday and Saturday. And as for rain, Rain, it does not look great, for, especially during the first part of the week. A few sprinkles Monday and Tuesday when temperatures will be cooler. But by Thursday, with that stronger front moving through, I am forecasting at least some storms Thursday, Thursday night. Uh, but a, another big thing to keep in mind is that some of those mornings are going to be cold. Saturday morning, a week from today, we're going to be down in the 30s in San Antonio and potentially near freezing up in the hill country, Tim. Well, we saw you riding the roller coaster in your graphic, and now we all get to go on the ride with you. There we go. Welcome aboard. Wee! <laughs> all right, Sarah, thank you so much. All right, Andrew, Spurs have had a very dark season, but some big bright <laughs> spots last night. Yeah, well, speaking of roller coasters, it's kind of been up yeah. and down over the last couple games. They've won now on three of their last five, and they can thank Mamu Kilashvili for picking up the slack late in the fourth quarter. He scored 11 points in his Spurs debut. We'll hear from him on his debut. Plus, Longhorns are Big 12 champs after a big win over Kansas. Got the highlights next.